You're welcome back to Afiat TV News tonight and our conversation. The pan Yoruba social political group, Afeni Fere, has told Tinubu he has no excuse not to restructure Nigeria after being elected on the platform and ideology of the group. The body also declared that its blueprint on restructuring Nigeria is ready. This is just as the body hinged its restructuring blueprint on the adoption of a parliamentary system of government for Nigeria. The Afeni Fere, which is one of the leading voices on agitation for restructuring Nigeria, had set up a committee to aggregate views of stakeholders on the demand. At a caucus meeting of the Afeni Fere held on Tuesday, the panel submitted its report. Adejumo said Afeni Fere had developed its blueprint on restructuring the country and called on the Tinubu's led administration to adopt the blueprint. The group said Tinubu, before his election, was at the vanguard of the call for the restructuring of the country. Hence, he must not betray Nigerians. They also described Tinubu as a beneficiary of the call for restructuring within his democratic dispensation. Sometime last year, November, a committee under the leadership of Oba Oladipo Olaiton was set up to aggregate Afeniferi's view on restructuring, and today the committee said that the report is ready. Tinubu himself is a product of Afeni Fere. He was elected on the platform and ideology of the Afeni Fere group. He took the federal government to court under the leadership of former President Obasanjo for 31 times in an effort to implement restructuring. He didn't do anything when former President Buhari was there for eight years, I quote. Probably he was bidding his time because he knew that northerners won't implement restructuring because they thought it won't favor them. But Tinubu is there now as the president. He is answerable to us all as a product of Afenifere and as what the whole Yoruba did under Afenifere, unquote. Well, joining me now to discuss this further is Henry Chibuzo. He's a political strategist and a social commentator. Good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening. Thank you for having me. I hope Abakaliki is good today. Yes, well, thank God. The Great. governor is doing well and it's uh, peaceful. Great. Okay, so restructuring is not a new word in the myriads of vocabularies used most often by politicians, and we heard it very often last year before the elections. So why do they get elected and ignore or probably choose to look away from restructuring? What are your thoughts on this exactly? Well, it is a, a very dicey political decision to make, mm. uh, considering that politicians in Nigeria always put their own interests ahead of the interests of the nation. So this has been the issue. Again, the lopsidedness of the political system that uh, you have in Nigeria is also one that what it to trade with caution before you delve into anything that could trigger any serious political reform in the country. You will look at, if you look at the situation at the National Assembly, for instance, we are now calling for a parliamentary system from what the noble uh, gentlemen from the Southwest, Afenifere, you call them, have said. Um, if you look at the National Assembly, what they are ask, actually asking for is that National Assembly should be collapsed into uh, one house, maybe a Senate or a, national, a House of Prep or whatever you may call it. Uh, basically, they want to return Nigeria to a parliamentary system. Of course, you know a lot of people will be affected, and in particular the North, um, which seems to have a greater control over the political system of the country, will not be comfortable to have that happen. Don't forget that this present political system that we have today was handed down to all of us by a military regime which stems from the North. And everybody has come to agree especially those from the South and every objective uh, uh, analyst from the North do agree that the military deliberately skewed power in favor of the North. And that system was done basically to grow the North and because you know the economic system of the North is not as strong as that of the South, to create that balance. But over the years, we have witnessed that this balance is yet to be achieved. And I think we have come to a point where the critical patriotic nationalists are beginning to say, is it not better we return back to where we were from the independence and see how we will all fare better 
because during the independence, uh, we fared better after independence and um, I think before the, the coup 1966 and the rest of the civil war, which occasioned the dissolution of the parliamentary system we had and which brought us to where we are today. It is, very, it is good for us to understand the history of all these things before we can now understand how to deal with it. It is a very dicey decision to make, which I doubt if the president has the capacity to handle because um, it, it, it has to do with having a majority of the, the, the state assemblies to endorse every amendment you are going to make on the constitution. It also, you have the National Assembly to agree with you. So it is a, it is a tough call. I don't see a South Tana achieving this, and I don't see a North Tana initiating this. I think you, you, need, you, need, you need a radical move to get this achieved. Uh, it is not enough to call for Mr. President to get involved in it. He has to weigh his chances and his options, except he is not ready to go for a second term. But if he's ready to go for a second term, I doubt if he'll be ready to involve in it. Well, it's it's also good to note that Afenifere um, is calling out to able to do the right thing by restructuring Nigeria. And as you said, well, it's probably easier said than implemented at this point and of course some months back some people had already spoke on the need for a parliamentary system of government now what does Tinubu stand to gain or lose if he doesn't let's not forget also that um namdikanu was also a very strong voice asking for the restructuring of Nigeria. And at that point, it seemed like it was just the Biafran group who was asking for restructuring. So, um, but then again, you said, well, it's easy to say. So why do we keep having them say or make these promises? Probably it's because um, that's what they feel that Nigerians want to hear. But why do they keep making these promises and then they can't implement it? Yeah, it is easier for you to say it when you are asking for the votes of the people. It is a political gimmick mm. that politicians use on all of us. They make promises that they know they cannot fulfill. And because uh, the masses do not have a soul, and the masses do not congregate to analyze issues, so they can throw anything at the masses just to whip up sentiment and get their votes. At the end of the day, the implementability of those things they have promised is another issue. I do not, I, 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 I insist, I do not see any South that are having the capacity to deliver restructuring to Nigerians. I am telling you, I do not see a South that are doing that. If you have somebody from the middle bed as the, as the president, perhaps that could also uh, help, but it would even be better if a core Northerner, like somebody from the Northwest or Northeast, who is patriotic enough to understand that Nigeria did better when it was under parliamentary system and when things were the way they were then, that Nigeria fared better. That is one kettle of fish. Another kettle of fish which I also need you to know is that during the time that Nigeria had her good old days, those days were the days that the present uh, superpowers of this world feared Nigeria and respected her. And the dread they had for Nigeria was one of the reasons why they had vested interest they had in Nigeria, which brought about the destabilization of the country and the, the stagnation that you have witnessed. Do you think, I put it to you, do you think that those superpowers will also watch you implement policies, political policies that will uh, allow the country to uh, get to the point of growth that will make Nigeria to become another country that they will be concerned about that could take a prime of place in Africa, that will lead the black nation to freedom. I do not think that they will also fold their hands. I think they will align with the North specifically to also make sure that such policies are not realized. So it requires somebody who is willing to sacrifice his political interest, who is ready to make this huge sacrifice, especially who do not have interest in the next election, who will say, this one time is what I want to do. I want to set Nigeria free. I want to set our people free. And I want to do this for the growth of this country. I do not see such leaders on the stage as we speak. I am not thinking that this administration has such capacity. They are too cautious, too careful, and they are bedeviled with a lot of economic challenges, which has made them cap in hands, going to these same people that will frustrate such policies. So I do not think that the, the stage is set for this to happen now. 
All right. So if we break it down step by step, let, let's get your perspective on local government autonomy. We've been speaking about that for a long time now. And of course, um, state policing. What primary concerns should we have with that? First of all, if we want to fix uh, local government autonomy, let us also look at what the, our brothers in the South are doing. If we, are, if we all have agreed that the, the, the system is skewed not to grow, then those of us who are aware, especially the governors in the South, should open the space, should allow that to happen. They should use their houses of assemblies to, to enforce or to enshrine such autonomy. You don't need Abuja to create autonomy in your local government in your states. You can do it. So let us start showing that example. If people do that and the development uh, become evident, I think those guys in the north will copy. They're talking about state police. Um, the fear people have expressed about state police is what similar to what you have with uh, the state uh, electoral commissions you have. Today you see that uh, the structures of democracy have been mesmerized and have been messed up by the governors of states using the state uh, electoral commissions. All the while that INEC was conducting local government elections, the kind of uh, criminal hijack of the political system at the local government level was not there as it, as it is now. You now see that any state that falls under a particular party, the entire state kills it. So that cannot be democracy, and that is not the democracy we used to have. So I think the governors also are also part of the problem, and they need to also make some adjustments and live by example, especially governors from the South. If we are pointing at the center, and we're asking the president to do the right thing, at their own respective capacities, they also need to show good example. All right. Of course, in the Afeni Ferre report, something that um, we cannot ignore was the fact that Tinubu took Obasanjo to court 31 times for restructuring and now probably gets to his turn. And they're saying you don't have a choice, you have no excuse, but to implement what you are also taking um, um, Obasanjo to court for. So how much trouble is this for Tinubu at the moment? Because especially because the call is not coming from the Igbo extraction anymore, but from the Southwest. So they seem to have shut up the mouth of Namda Kano, who was also saying there is, there should be a need, there's need for restructuring. And now this is coming from his own people. How much trouble is this for the president? It's, it is not an issue that the president will run into trouble. It is an issue of conscience. Mm. And um, the, the president will have to be driven by his own uh, convictions. That's my, uh, my perspective on this. And I also assume that the president will not take what they have said seriously, given the fact that this same crop of Afenifere were not in support of his emergence as president. Don't forget the roles that Ayo Debanjo and his team has played in the past. So that does not, that looks like they are now putting a banana peel on his part, in his, on his political part. And I don't think, because of that, I do not think that he will take what they have said seriously. Otherwise, he would have gotten a response from the government circle uh, about that. Presidency have not said anything, and they simply ignored it. If they are going to make any reforms, it has to come by way of not just Afeni Fere putting pressure. The entire South and Middle Belt need to put that pressure. The entire country need to wake up and demand this. And I think that the are beginning to realize that it does not matter who is at the center. What is important is that if the man at the center is not competent enough to enforce certain laws and make sure that life is worth living, then it's not worth having your brother at the center. So we have, we have witnessed an eight years of the northern dominance of the past eight years, and we have seen how even especially people in Castina are complaining about banditry, insecurity, and even the, the latest one, which is uh, food insecurity. So we have seen all that, that it is not really about who sits at the center. It's about what the person is bringing to the center, the capacity of that individual, and what the person is offering the country. If we get to that point where majority of Nigerians will realize that it doesn't matter who is there, what is important is the capacity of that person and what the person can do or can bring the kind of change the person can bring to the people, how the person is going to better the lives of an average Nigerian, then we would have gotten to that level where we can confidently say that Nigeria, Nigeria is now on the path of growth. So far, I do not think that uh, we have gotten to that point where a good number of us have come to that realization of that fact. 
Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us, Henry Chibuza, political strategist and social commentator. We thank you. Thank you so much for having me. All right, and just before we go, here's a reminder of the top stories. Eabia State Government has issued a stern warning to cattle dealers at the regional cattle market. In business tonight, Minister of Finance and the Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edu, has blamed the current inflation in the country on eight years of printing money. On the international scene, Senegal's government has announced that the country's presidential election will take place on March 24th. And that's all that we have for you tonight on Afia TV News, streaming live from Enugu, Nigeria. And on behalf of the entire production team, we say many thanks for watching.